Welcome back. If you have your Bible again today, open with me to the incredible, the glorious, the astounding, the astonishing, the mind-blowing chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. And we're going to pick up right where we left off yesterday. If you missed yesterday, go back and watch it. Amen. 1 Corinthians 13, and I'm going to start in the fourth verse. I'm going to read all the way through the end of the chapter, then we're going to come in and, and, and talk to you a little bit. Charity or love suffers long, and it's kind. Remember kindness. Remember manners, courtesy, decency, and respect. Those four things that we had before the Internet. Amen. Those four things we had before tech. Well, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do in this series. We're going to apply, apply the text of the Word of God to the tech. Let me say that again. We're going to apply the text of the Word of God to the tech. We're going to talk about the Bible and modern technology. I'm going to talk to you about some things that no other preacher is talking about. We're going to go some places that no other pastor, no other evangelist in America will talk to you to, about honestly because they're about your money but I'm about one thing, getting me into heaven and, and getting you into heaven. Amen? I don't care about your money. You don't see me on here asking for your seed faith gift. You don't see me on here like Jimmy Swaggart or Gabriel Swaggart or Francis Swaggart or Donnie Swaggart. So please send me your money. <laughs> if you don't send $1,000, we're going to go off the air. You don't see me on here saying, well, if you send me $1,000, God's going to supernaturally get you out of debt. If you send me $1,000 or $100, God's going to heal your disease. God is going to open up a financial miracle. God is going to give you increase. No, no, no. You ever notice with the preachers of prosperity who I call the robber barons of gospel's gilded golden age, living lifestyles of the rich and spiritual. Remember Robin Leach? Lifestyles of the rich and famous. I'm Robin Leach. Lou can live lifestyles of the rich and famous. Well, if Robin were here today and he looked at the television evangelist in the electronic church, he'd talk about lifestyles of the rich and spiritual with Robin Leach. This is disgusting. I see these guys and they're, and they're extorting money out of people. They're, they're blackmailing money out of people. They're robbing. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I, that's not my ministry. I don't do that. Amen. I don't promise you $1,000 if you plant a seed. I don't promise you favor and increase in return. You ever notice these guys, the way you get prosperous is if you give them money. They don't ever tell you, oh, go give it to the orphanages. They don't ever tell you, go give it to Ed Elliott so he can preach in Africa. Amen. They say, give it to me. It's a get-rich-quick scheme. And who gets rich is the preachers, and who gets poor is the people who are conned. I call it the God con. G-O-D-C-O-N, the God con. But I don't do that. Hallelujah. I only care. This is a non-profit prophet you're listening to. This is a not-for-profit prophet you're listening to. Glory to Almighty God. I'm not about yours. I'm about you. Paul made tents for a living. Why? Because he did not want people to think he's in it for the money. I'm an evangelist. I deal with sinners just about every day of my life. And you know what the sinners say? Oh, Brother Mike, all y'all preachers, y'all are just about the money. They're right. They're right. Y'all are just hypocrites. You're self-righteous. They're right. The sinners have wisdom. The preachers are all about money. And this is why we have the apostasy. But Paul wasn't, hallelujah, and I'm not. So you can trust me. Don't touch that dial. You can trust Brother Dial. You can trust me because I'm trusting only you. I'm not after your money. I'm not promising you a new car or a new house. I'm not promising you anything if you, if you support me because I'm a pro bono ministry. Hallelujah. Now let's get into this. Love suffers long as kind. Charity envies not. 
vaunts not itself up, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they'll fail. Whether there be tongues, they'll cease. Knowledge, it'll vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, Jesus is coming. Then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then, face to face, our faith will become sight. Hallelujah. Now we know in part, but then shall we know even as we're known. And now abides faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. In chapter 14, verse 1, just one verse of chapter 14, Paul says, follow after love. Desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Follow after love. So we are in this series going to learn what love is and what love isn't. The first point that I want to talk to you about is that love is not laying up treasures upon this earth. And that's what the gospel has basically, sadly, tragically become these days. It's just a get-rich-quick scheme. The preachers say it's God's will for you to be rich. They, they misinterpret and misquote and take out of context several scriptures, and they build a pretext of the gospel of prosperity. And they say that, that it's okay to be rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing. It's okay to have affluence. It's okay to be upscale and uh, high-end. You know, is that what Jesus said? Whose name is on the door? Who? Creflo Dollar? No. Paula White's name is not on that door. Benny Hinn's name is not on that door. Leroy Thompson, Fred Price, Jerry Seville, Charles Capps, Ken Hagen, Ken Copeland. Their name is not on that door. Joseph Prince, Joel Osteen, Rick Warren, their name is not on that door. Whose name is on the door of Christianity? Jesus Christ. His name's on the door. He is the door. And what did he say? Well, in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus commanded. It's not a request. Jesus makes no requests. Jesus commanded, and he said, Lay not up for yourselves treasures on the earth, where the moths corrupted and the thieves break in and steal it but instead lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven jesus spoke to the farmer who said well i'm going to build bigger barns and he said no you're not because tonight your soul is going to be required of you and he called him a fool our bigger barns today are our banks our investment plans our iras our jets our boats our bigger cars, our bigger houses. Come on. Jesus condemned all that. Second point. The love of God is not lying in your deep pockets, purses, and pocketbooks with filthy lucre. How many of you know in 1 Timothy 6 verse 10, Paul said, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And then he says, it's a sin to want to be rich. I tell you, 99 out of 100 Christians today, if you surveyed them, do you want to be rich? Yeah, because these liars from the pulpit are saying it's okay. No, it's a sin. Jesus condemned the rich, the rich in no uncertain terms. Jesus said it is impossible for the rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus said it is more likely the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. Jesus had a constant war fighting riches. He condemned riches. That's God's word to the billionaires and the multimillionaires. It's God's word to Bill Gates and, and real Donald Trump and Marky Zuckerberg and Sundar Pichai and Jeff Bezos. And like we could list them all day, Warren Buffett. You're not going to go to heaven. You have to get rid of it all. You have to divest, not invest, but divest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the word of God, but you're lying in your pockets purses and pocketbooks, but that's not the love of God. The love of God 
is to take care of the least of these, my brethren, and to live for others instead of living for yourself. Now, I'm telling you not what you think Jesus taught, but I'm telling you what Jesus actually taught. I'm not telling you what I think the Bible says. I'm telling you what the Bible actually says. The love of God has to deal and has to do with how you treat other people. Jesus said in Matthew 25, he talked about the least of these, my brethren, the one who's in prison, the one who is an orphan, the one who is a widow. How did you treat the least of these, my brethren, when the TV lights and cameras were off, when social media wasn't watching, when it was just you, them, and God? So the third point I want to talk to you about, the love of God is not locking up immigrants migrants and aliens and separating them from their parents. People wonder, they say, Brother Mike, why is America under the judgment of God? Why are we under the wrath of God? Why, are, why do we have a plague? Why do we have a pandemic? A lot of reasons. One, COVID-19 COV is because of our covetousness COV and our greed. Number two, CO, capital V-I-D, COVID-19 is because of our vile, violent, disgusting, filthy, evil videos that we watch instead of reading verses of scriptures. God's sick and tired of it. He hates it. But another reason is how this nation treats her immigrants. How we treat the poor. We have a legal system in this nation that supports the rich and is on the side of the rich and is against the poor and makes life hard. We have a judicial system where many white police officers attack innocent, unarmed black men. That's not the love of God. The love of God is putting others ahead of yourself. That's what our text brought. Did you hear what I read? The love of God is kind. It's not unkind. The love of God envies not. But see, we even have preachers today saying it's okay to envy. Greed is in. Greed, it's okay to be covetous. It's, all, it's okay to lust. Whereas Paul said, you need to be content. Philippians 4, be content where you are. But whatever happened to contentment? Joel Osteen doesn't teach to be content where you are. Joyce Meyer, certainly. Joe Prince, they don't teach to be content where you are. To them, that's a sin. To them, that's unbelief. To, you ought to always have more. Have a bigger house. Have a bigger, bigger car. Have a prettier wife. Have more money in the bank. Have more favor. But is that what the Bible teaches? No. The love of God is in the and not. Amen. It goes on. People today vaunt not. We're all about self-promotion. Vaunt's not itself. It's not puffed up. Puffed up in pride. But people today say pride is a virtue, but the Bible says pride is a sin. The Bible says humble yourself. Humble yourself before God, and then God will lift you up. But instead of today, we lift ourselves up. Just like Lucifer back in before the creation of humanity. He said, I will ascend my throne above the stars of God. And his revolution lasted about three seconds, and he was cast to the earth. But we today, preachers, Jimmy Swaggart walks around in Luciferic pride, thinking he's better than you. He's too, too big to take your calls and talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. It's Luciferic pride. Oh, I have the biggest ministry in the world. I'm too big to fail. I'm the only ministry that has the gospel. So that's pride, ladies and gentlemen. Four. Fourth point. The love of God is not loquaciously and loudly speaking or allegedly speaking and praying in tongues to be seen and to be heard by men. That's what our text said. You can rattle off in tongues all day long, but if the motive, listen to me, if the motive of your heart is to be seen by men, so people can say, oh, look how spiritual that brother Mike is. He prays in tongues two hours a day. He prophesies. Look how holy he is. Look how he moves in the gifts. Look how much knowledge he has. Look how many degrees he has. He has this degree, and he has that degree, and this degree. He's been to this seminar. Oh, call him doctor. Call him reverend. No, no, no. God's not into any of that. God doesn't care what theological seminary, cemetery you went to. God doesn't care how many degrees are behind your name. God doesn't care if people call you doctor. 
Amen. But all this is is talk. It, it's 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 a it's he he said it's a it's a it's a, a, a sounding brass. It's a it's a tinkling cymbal. It's loquaciousness. It's Babylon. And God sees what, he, what, what the church today that thinks it's in the middle of a, of a revival, but instead it's in the middle of, a, of an apostasy. It is the, they think they're the bride of Christ, but in fact they are the whore of Babylon. And they just babble on incessantly, babbling on in vain repetitions, in vain repetitions, babbling on. The love of God is also, number five, not loud Laodicean confessions of riches and increase. In Revelation 3.17, I'm rich, I'm increased with goods, I have need of nothing. God answers your profession and your confession with his response. He says, no, you are poor, wretched, blind, miserable, and naked. That's what God thinks of the apostate church, the whore of Babylon. I'm telling you what the love of God is, what the love of God isn't. We're going to continue tomorrow. I love you. Thanks for tuning in today. It's Pastor Mike. God bless you. Stay tuned.